The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Tommy O'Brien and Tom is out today. I'm fortunate to be joined again by our man Basil Chapman. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. What a disruptive session yesterday. Ah, and, 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 and what about the disruptive uh, half hour we've had since the opening bell, right? Well, you know, you think so, but if you're looking at the Dow, Dow down 32, sure. S&P down 3, I mean, uh, this is, you know, people keep talking, you hear, now you're hearing ads on the radio and TV and they keep talking about this volatile market. It's only been volatile on the way up. Usually volatile means down. Sure. And, so to, and to just sum, sum it up, folks, Dow is like down 30 right now. S&P is down 4. NASDAQ down about 14. But I had the Dow chart up there. We were above 26.5 to start off the market, Basil. A little bit of a yes. sell-off, 26.409 currently. Uh, lots going on. We have Morgan Stanley earnings this morning. Pretty flat, but they seem to deliver. Morgan Stanley right now up about 40 cents. Was as high as 48.61, though. And uh, we're going to get right into it. Speaking of earnings, speaking of action in the market, let's go over to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. Right. Every morning, folks, right after this program, 45 minutes, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team breaking down defined risk options. Lots going on in terms of earnings season. We had Netflix last night. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Basil. How are we doing? Good morning, Kevin. We're doing well, man. I'm How gonna, are you? I'm going to I'm going to connect some interesting dots for you guys in terms of the trade this morning. Yeah. I'm going to compare United Healthcare and Netflix. Okay. And here's why. Both these companies released good earnings, right? Both of these companies opened higher, but both of these companies have uncertainty in their future. And so both of these companies opened higher and sold off hard. Why? Not because of their earnings. Their earnings were good numbers that both these firms put up. But healthcare, what's going on, the uncertainty in the healthcare and the competition that's coming to Netflix's market, both is almost, and we talked about this on Fast Market yesterday, makes you almost want to ignore the earnings and look and the underlying risk with the with the, both these firms is the future not the numbers that they put up that's why these stocks are acting like they are yeah it was pretty interesting right in terms of uh and netflix jumping to that one so they um they yep. only expect earnings per share of 55 cents in the second quarter and that's compared to almost a dollar 99 cents analysts had been looking for that forecast so really talking about a decrease there um, and talking about how maybe the price raises that they've had could hurt their subscriber growth. Um, and Tommy and Basil, you know this stock was trading over 370 pre-market. Yeah. Right. Yes. So I mean, it was it was trading significantly higher before the open. Now down five. Five dollars and twenty-seven cents here, three fifty-four. Yeah, I mean, I have the chart up here, Kevin, on the TD Ameritrade platform, Think or Swim, and six thirty in the morning, we're back to about three four, three fifty-five, and we charged yep. all the way up almost to three seventy-five, and then uh, a slow fade from about eight forty-five, and then really it fell out of bed right on the opening bell. Yeah. Yeah, and and ba very similar. If you look at the chart action yesterday on United Healthcare, very similar in terms yeah. of, of the chart action. So that's a little bit of kind of a wet blanket on those two names, but I'll give you something to be positive about, guys. We just had a number come out, international trade, okay? That, it came out minus $49.4 billion. Now, think about this. They were looking for a much higher number, over $53 billion in terms of a trade deficit. So our trade deficit is dropping. And now, what should that lead to? That's going to feed right in to first quarter G GDP. So GDP, a number that a lot of people have been talking about in terms of trailing downward, this is a much stronger number than, than, than people were looking for. And Kevin, that's, that's been the missing link, hasn't it? We've been waiting for this GDP to improve. This mm -hmm. could be the first real sign. 
And right, and as you're waiting for that GDP number, what do you start doing, Basil? You start looking for the numbers that make up that GDP. Well, international trade and our trade deficit is a big part of it. So I'm looking for some, starting to move to the north in terms of some of the expectations for first quarter GDP. And then, of course, Kevin, we had Morgan Stanley coming out with pretty decent yep. numbers this morning. But um, just like you had mentioned, some similar action there in terms of trading higher, up to 48.60. And we're now a buck off that level, not flat, but up 40 cents. Um, but big numbers, man, almost $10 billion in revenue, I believe, for the quarter. And yep. um, great products, great, great uh, revenue in their wealth management division as well. Well, the you know, here's the good news. If you know trading revenues for the quarter are, were were soft, but like Morgan Stanley is is very focused on wealth management, like you just said, that in a market that went straight up, probably had a pretty good quarter out of them. And you know what? We had a nice upgrade from for Goldman Sachs today. So all in all, the financial group weathering earnings pretty well here. Yeah, I would say so, so, man. Those numbers are just staggering. The banks put that's up. Really, that's really improved the IAI, which is the Broker Dealer Index, which is uh, something that we've been following uh, with my subscribers for a real, real long. And I think that's going to be important. You probably could speak to it better uh, on your side of it. But if the brokers start to see increased revenue because or re increased uh, participation by the layperson coming in, and I think if the Dow keeps moving up like this, and it's announced on the radio and, or TV enough times, people will start getting in. So this could be a very positive aspect. Right. Here's what I, here's what I see from, from the first quarter. Two things happened that are significant for trading houses and brokerage firms and banks in general. You know, the market went straight up, which doesn't make for great trading revenues. And net interest margin was at best flat, right, because... And for the first time in nine quarters, the Fed didn't raise rates during a quarter. So those two things are the negatives for uh, for trade for for you know houses, banks, financials in general. But you're still getting wealth management and people net uh, you know net worth going higher because of the market that basically went straight up in the first quarter. Yeah. Doesn't get much better than uh, the 90 days we had, and it was a tough 90 days before that, which is kind of what precedes yes, it. Yes, it was. So what else, uh, what are we talking about today, Kevin, on the program? Today we're going to talk about a couple good names. Uh, United Rentals, right, always some, something that, that we like to look at. And then we're going to take a look at some of the earnings and then Skechers. Okay. Skechers comes out with earnings after the bell today. And if you remember last quarter, Skechers had a huge gap in their chart from a big earnings beat. So we're going to Gee, talk about Nike. Well. Talk about Skechers and then trade Skechers because Skechers is that one of those names. It's really interesting to follow because it got a little bit of an identity crisis because what do you think of when, when, when you think of Skechers, right? The old wide shoes for, for older, older people being active. But they're actually getting heavily into the triathlete and Ironman okay. uh, competitions and sponsoring athletes. So they've gone to the complete other side and they've got new line of products, costs, inventory management they've got a lot of good things going on we're going to look at that as well and kevin we got to go but how about qcom and apple right qualcomm from about 55 dollars up to 82 this morning on that deal just what, that, that clears a lot of 5g oh for, for, man for apple people. qualcomm folks 45 minutes from right now kevin thanks so much man we look forward to the program Thank you, Kevin. Day, guys. Thanks for having you me too. Out. Thanks. We'll be right back, folks. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got the Dow trading down 51 points right at 26,400. S&P is negative by about 4, 2902. And NASDAQ negative by about 5, trading 79.94. And um, Basil, maybe we can jump to oil to take a look at right now. We have, it's Wednesday. We get the inventory numbers 1030 in the morning every Wednesday. And we're looking at the June contract. A little bit of a sell-off in the last hour or two, we're up to as high as 64.70 in this contract. We're currently trading at 64.21. Um, just taking a look, Basil. I know sometimes you follow the program, right? We like to take a look at kind of what kind of volatility trades. Maybe you can take a look at prior to this inventory number coming out. We'll jump real quick. The 11 a.m. So it's nice here. 64.21 we're trading at, and. Um, so let's see. 11 a.m.s are going to give us an option of 64.50, and. Basil, what we like to do is get, you know, really where we're just trading volatility, not paying much premium, and that happens when, of course, these um, option-like spreads line up with a price point kind of right next to it, and it seems like 65 is going to be our option. Oh, no, here we go. Okay, I'm moving a little quick. 64.25, we could have exposure sure. to the upside and the downside, which is almost perfect with two pennies away. We're looking at the noon expirations. Our bullish spread runs up $1.50 to $65.75. That's going to cost us about $18. And then the bearish spread is going to be a little bit more only because we're two ticks into the money on the bearish spread from $64.25 down to $62.75. So we're looking at about $40, Basil, which represents $0.40 cents away from kind of right almost where we are um, prior to that number. And I'm just going to jump around real quick to see if the 230s give us a price point that matches. And um, they really don't. So we'll leave it at that, about 40 points. What, uh, what's your take on oil where we are, Basil? We're at some decent levels. Man, we've been hovering around this $64, $65 mark, it seems, for a while. And oil just can't fade um, no matter what happens. So for me, this is very important. I spoke about it yesterday on my show. I was talking about actually for about a week now. I've been looking at it, and I said, crude oil. <clears throat> and I, I'm looking at the continuous contracts. So okay. of course, there are, different, there are different oil contracts. 
I'm looking at the continuous crude and base. Uh, I'm crude oil. It's called crude oil continuous contract. Uh, it says May 19, but I'm looking at it right now at 64.13. So I'm about seven cents away from where, where you are. Most important is that it's formed this rectangle in the daily chart on the left. It's formed this rectangle chart, and within the context of patterns, you'll see this oval pattern that I've got here around about this 200 period moving average, and then the nine and the, the nine period, the green moving average and the black moving average, that's the 14 period, ran right through the 200 with the price holding beautifully. In fact, once it broke above on the 29th of March, once it broke above uh, 59.41 was the low. It hasn't touched until three days ago. It hadn't even come back to touch the nine period exponential moving average. Now you can see the MACD is starting to fade a little bit. It hasn't quite crossed. Yeah, it's on zero. I said the 0% the line hasn't crossed negative. And the stochastic is still strong at 84%. And what I had said to uh, on my show was this kind of pattern we've seen a lot, and it's a pattern that I look at. I, very often in the futures market, you can see overnight sometimes you can have a rectangle formation. And eventually, if it's after a big move up, you'll find that you come back and you, you might be able to test the upside resistance. Good chance that you're going to break the lower, lower resistance, uh, lower support. In this particular case, that would be 62.99. Now, I'm looking at the weekly. You're talking about the the, the microcosm just straight off to the, yes. the gong at 10.30. So let me now go and say, for me, this rectangle formation is saying that crude oil has really had a fabulous move. It's digesting the gains. I would not be surprised. I'd see it as looking out that is, if we do close under 62.50, there's a good chance that we're going to consolidate for about a week or so. And on the upside, I see limited upside although there can be some upside, but I think we're getting to a lot of resistance. So now now we can drill down, we can go to the 10-minute chart. 10-minute chart went underneath the 200-period moving average of 64.11. It's up against the 9-period moving average right here at 60, I believe that's 64.20, 64.19. And there's another one, the 14-moving average at 64.24. And I, what I've seen on the futures, when you've shown the chart after the move, we can have a big spike down and then come back up, or you can have a big spike up and then come down. Yeah. It isn't all that often that there's a that the initial direction is the way that it just keeps going. It invariably has this kind of a surprise, and, oh, then, I agree. and then it gets and then it gets on track for the, the a, a good part of the trading from 11 till about 2 or maybe even 2.30 in the afternoon. So this is what I'm thinking. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's enough leftover strength that if there is a pullback to the 64.07 or slightly lower level, that there's a retest and it comes back to try for the 64.18, 64.20 level. But if this time there's a spike and it can go to the 64.30 level, I then think we've raised the level of support because I can see the Dow's trying its best to come back here, and they often go together. The action, if, if the oil has a really good move, it very often boosts the, the, the stock market for a moment. Yes. So I'm thinking that the surprise could be in the end we move to the upside. Okay. There. Okay. It's supposed to, I believe, have somewhere of a build around 7.329 million barrels. So more than 7 million barrel build is somewhere in the expectation that we get. Um, and yeah, I mean, it would be really tough to be bearish oil because we've seen some really surprising numbers, Basil, to, um, as in surprise builds over where they thought it would be. And somehow the price has traded higher even so in recent can years. I can I just define that at least for my thinking in other words if there was a build if you've got oversupply you should see a drop exactly but if the overall specter is that um, crude oil is in demand because of economic reasons or other reasons that could immediately uh, negate the, ne the negativity Definitely. of the, the oversupply. And that's what's been, I suspect, has been happening now for at least four, five, six weeks. Exactly. And that's and that's what always surprising, right? I mean, the, the 
the fundamentals must be there with oil to be trading where it's at, right? For 65, 67, coming off 48. So there's something going on in terms of the economy, the demand for oil. But it's just intriguing that we've come into this number on various weeks where maybe they're looking for a build of 2 million barrels. Maybe they're looking for a build of 1 million barrels. You get a spike of a build of 7 million barrels and still the contract trades higher, um, which is just, I think, speaks to how strong those fundamentals might be behind it, saying, no, 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 no matter what's going on here, it's all about the future, and we anticipate that demand. Um, nonetheless. So, what, with, that, with that in mind, what would be your immediate thinking in terms of actually putting a position on? It what would be would... tough for me to be bearish, because consistently, I feel like that trade would be so frustrating. You know, if you're trading volatility, right, you're trading this number, you have a surprise build, you should get paid for that. You know, at some point, Correct. you know, yes. and if you haven't and I haven't been trading it, but you better be aware that it might, you know, you might need more than a surprise build to profit from the downside. So great. We will find out, folks. Basil we'll and I will be back in three minutes. Come back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. We get the Dow now just negative seven. We've got a little bit of a pop. S&P's flat. NASDAQ in positive territory again, up nine points, trading at 8,009. We'll get the number as they come out. I don't know if the Bloomberg up this morning with Tom away, but we will get that number. But nonetheless, we're looking at the crude oil chart right now. A little bit of volatility on the EIA. And right now we're trading at 64.29. We had spiked as low as 64.14. But as Basil, you had said, it usually takes uh, a few minutes to say the least for this to sort out which way it wants to jump and um, we'll find out I'm sure and we'll try and get that EIA number when it becomes available as well. So for traders the uh, what we've seen in the last uh, two minutes that range is actually quite wide, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all things considered, as in, you know, sometimes if you get a number, and we'll see what that number is, um, 20 cents isn't too dramatic, right? I mean, you can open up right, 40 I to 50 so. cents sometimes, yeah. right, if it is a big miss. But like you stated, just because it might pop 40 cents um, within a second on that number, it can back it down in the span of a few minutes and maybe right. trade to negative territory. And as the well. uh, what's interesting is that the uh, E uh, the S&P E mini is trading it's come off the low it went down it had a really interesting session it, uh, the high today was at 29.2350 the low is 29.0450 that is uh, quite a move in a very short period of time right. 19 points. I know. And now we're back to 29.10. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I thought was a very interesting when I was going through the charts um, for my subscribers to my opening call is that we actually have more positions than usual. I, I never like that. Whenever we, I get to a certain number, uh, we're getting close to some kind of a top. It's, and the reason is that we start to look at the lower price stocks and we get those. And the lower price stocks are, are coming in when the big ones are starting to fade. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, there's a lot of resistance just overhead, yet we've got this cycle, uh, the semis went to all-time highs, the Qs have followed, the XLK led the way, that's the tech sector of the S&P. Um, the the S&P itself is not that far behind, and the Dow is quite a bit further, and the IWM is further than that. And we saw last year from 2018, from January, that there was the cycle of making tops over the period of the year. So my suspicion is that we're just waiting for each cycle to come in. And uh, the question I had for subscribers was, um, the headline on my, my Traders Corner, from my, uh, the new part of the newsletter that has all the stocks and everything we're looking at, uh, was, are we just about to bump into resistance for a week, week, that's the one coming up? Or is this a breakout to the 27,000s just beginning with the Qs, SMHs, and XLK leading? And the S&P is quite close. I think that this is a period where we should see some kind of sideways move, at least some kind of rebuilding of energy. And we've actually seen that in the Dow. I mean, we saw, uh, Kevin spoke about it. UNH sharply lower, and yet you've got uh, some of the stocks in the Dow doing very nicely. Goldman's coming back after being hit. So I think this is a period of very, I think we're getting, coming into a, kind of a choppy period. Um, and we'll see what happens. But Yeah, uh, this has been some chop today. And I have pulled up the number um, in terms of you got to love the one thing about Twitter. If you want fast breaking news, folks, Twitter is a great spot for it. It's one of the things. And so, excuse me, here's a tweet uh, talking about, so they actually had, a draw, Basil, and I'm trying to get what the actual estimate was because the draw was 1.4 million barrels. So oh. crude, crude oil inventories falling 1.4 million barrels, distillate inventories falling 362,000, gas inventories falling 1.1. One, um, the numbers in the actual column here on the screen that I'm showing representing the actual number. And uh, yeah, so pretty interesting that you have those numbers falling. Now, I'm not sure the survey number might be what they were indicating, but that could be a Bloomberg survey. And I don't think that's the median analyst estimate. There's a few things that play into that. But nonetheless, you do crude oil inventories falling 1.396 million barrels. So uh, yeah. yeah, even with the declining um, expectation. It seems like that was close to forecast of minus 1.2. So I believe the 7 million number we were talking about was last week's um, number that we got. So we have a draw. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, look, it's still stuck in this rectangle formation. It How is. In the live, it has not moved. 64.19, looking at the chart. So we're basically within uh, two to three pennies of where we were prior to that number. So it seems is to it? be pretty close to forecast and hasn't moved the market too much just yet. 
Isn't it fascinating that the high of the uh, 9th of April at 64.79, we've had one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth session after an absolutely fantastic move, basically from mid-March to uh, mid-April, going from the 56.55 level up nine or 10 points, and now it's gone sideways. It did that before. Look, it did this consolidation where the oval pattern is, back round from about the 18th of March to yes. where it broke out at the beginning of April. And now it's uh, sideways again. And you can see the magnet of this 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart, which is at, and this is what I was saying the other day, 65. My suspicion is just at this particular point, I think we have somewhat limited upside, but I do see some upside, just a little breakout from where. We were um, a week ago. Okay. But at the same time, what this is saying, this 200 period moving average in the weekly with the MACD and stochastic so strong, it says that at, at worst we should have a sideways choppy range without a breakdown. And that 60.50 level right there in the nine period moving average, that would be major support. I'm not sure yet if we're going there. But at the same time, it does say this is a magnet we could trade. In a, in a choppy sine wave move just over and under and over, hanging around making the 64 area kind of a fulcrum for the next big break to the upside. It's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Nice, and we will find out. We'll check back in through the hour because it is intriguing. Sometimes we check back in, and it's uh, it'll get a pop at a random it's time so throughout, right? Some, thought, they'll right. figure out where that wants to go. Um, so how about Netflix, if we could talk about it real briefly? Basil, pretty interesting uh, to pull up the chart. So they came out with their numbers last night. Pretty decent numbers. The one thing is their forecast for the second quarter. Um, whoops, not NFL, NFLX. Uh, forecast had disappointed to say the least but the market i mean you basically flat down one percent but it had been as high as 370 375 we we're talking to kevin hinks about it um pretty interesting that it had that type of volatility and man if somebody really got filled and i think they did maybe right after that news came out 326 that's quite a fill um 30 points below where we're trading at right now that was that was pre pre-open right uh, that was literally at 4:01 p.m. last night. It hit that oh, 3:26. Oh, that, oh, you, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yesterday, I was I typed into the den that I saw it down $14. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then it started to come back, and then it was up. And then it was down. Yeah, it was and it really, really. I put it even <laughs> last night. I had it, and let's just put. I put it on a minute chart just to see how quick that reversal actually was. In the first minute, it held up there at 374, and then the second minute, it was at 326, and then it was back to about 342 by the third minute. And then and those, it kind of, were, those were buys. I mean, they, I'm sure that there was volume attached. Yes, no, there is, and you can see it on the chart, yeah. and it's nothing. I mean, you're talking about 118,000 traded in that big bar, if you're looking at Tiger TV, um, that made it down to 326. So there was some action, for sure. Right. Okay, this hour's flying by. Come on back, folks. Wow. When we come back, too, we're going to have a special guest, Mr. Teddy Kegstat from Forex Trading Unlocked. He's going to be joining us, talking a little bit of Forex in this market. Come on back. Basil and I'll be right back in three minutes. Great. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. We got the Dow negative about 20 points. s and is basically unchanged right now. NASDAQ positive by 16. And Basil, I'm going to jump around real quick. Uh, Qualcomm, quite a number, man, that they are putting up between yesterday and today. Of course, Qualcomm and Apple settling their differences. So we get the pop yesterday from about 58. We close out the day at about 70. And we're now trading at 80 to 82. And just... I it closed the day at 70, and then there were upgrades. So the upgrade today okay. took it all the way to 82.52. Now it's at 79. This guy, I, I suspect the, the spike up, there'll be some filling in at the 75 level. Um, but it, it, it's probably a game changer in some ways. So I think how Qualcomm becomes a leader, uh, it's getting, or at this point it wasn't yesterday, and now it is, <laughs> price-wise I'm talking about. How it holds is going to be very important. I think it's, a, as I said, I think yesterday was a game changer in many ways oh, with right. Intel. And, yeah. yeah, I'd say the market agrees. So, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the 5G chips. Um, if Apple wasn't going to work with Qualcomm, they would have had to work with Intel. Seems to be the consensus that they did not think that Intel was up to that task. And I believe Intel came out after this deal, after the market, and said they were probably going to be getting out of that 5G market. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, it's kind of... to the upside. Everybody's up. Apple's up. Uh, Intel's up, Qualcomm's now, up. Now, what's just so remarkable, I mean, this is up, Basil. You're talking about basically 37%, I put the number. Their market cap, and I had an article up, and it was interesting. Let's go. Where are we? There we are. So Qualcomm stock ro more, rose more than 20% after the news broke, boosting its market cap by $14.5 billion to $84 billion. But that is prior to today's move. Today, I just pulled it up, and at a price of $79.28, this has a market cap of $96 billion. So you just went from a market cap of $70 billion to $96 billion overnight, $26 billion. That is quite a win in court when your market cap goes up $26 billion as a result of it um, and they said it's going to go up uh, their earnings per share are going to increase by two dollars I mean a huge profit because they're going to get a payment number one to kind of reflect the past royalties that they I guess were battling over and then they sign a deal that says we're going to work together because Apple basically said we need this technology and uh, the market loved to hear that for sure quite a quite a run it was yes and I'm, I'm interested to see how Intel holds. Are they losing now, not by being part of the 5G? So one of the I, things I had sure. heard in there, and because that's the first thing I thought, right, to just come out and yeah. resign that fact. But I guess they, they number one, um, very small margins in being in such small devices. 
and they want to focus more on server centers and being in computers, I believe, where I guess that's, and I'm not a fundamental guy within this industry, but that is uh, the breakdown in terms of they just found it very difficult to compete and probably competing from a second place role, you know, to Qualcomm having the, the distinct leader in that category already. And if you're trying to comp compete with a, a company that is such a leader in a, a section of the industry that is so small in margins, right, that that is a very tough feat. Um, some of these chips I was listening to yesterday, I mean, they take three months to build from start to finish, and that's not talking about, you know, the, what goes into um, testing them or going. That's just talking about that they take three months to build because they're just so high-tech, these little tiny right. chips. Um, pretty remarkable. All right, with yes, that, yes. we're going to jump to some Forex, Basil. Let's go over to our man, Great. Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com. Folks, you can check out Teddy every trading day over there. We interview and talk to Teddy every Wednesday, 1040 in the morning. Teddy, good morning. Teddy, I'd like to introduce you to our man, Basil Chapman. Basil, Mr. Teddy Kegstat. How are we doing, Teddy? Hi, Teddy. Nice to meet you. So... Teddy, where are we looking on Forex, man? We have quite a week going on. We got rates trading a bit higher. Um, what do you have on your radar? What are you checking out in terms of Forex this week? Well, this week, now that we're heading into a holiday week, I would say be very, very careful. If you're not in a position already that you're managing, I would say be very careful about uh, getting one on right now because volatility could be crazy over the next couple of days. Most likely it will not be because Friday the markets are going to be closed. Um, or closing, you know, from Europe on in, and uh, it's, you know, it's pretty much going to be a three-day weekend, you know, as far yes. as Europe. Yes, we'll be closed on Friday, definitely, yes. So, so in that regards, I would say be careful when it comes to trading any of the currencies. Um, right now, they're kind of in a holding pattern for the British pound, Canada, the yens floating around the 112 area. Um, so I would say, like, right now, don't expect any major breakout um, unless there's some really big news that comes out. Um, what you did mention there at the beginning was the interest rates. Um, that is one thing I think that's supporting the dollar right now. Um, a couple weeks ago, we were talking how the carry trade is off the table. I think right now, because you have the two-year through the 30-year pressing lows, meaning rates are going a little bit higher on the market side, I think that's supporting the dollar right now. You know, there's no real fundamental news outside of that that would be supporting it right now, you know, especially with oil on its highs. So I think that right now, be very careful. Most markets are in a holding pattern, but we do have the Swiss that is now pushing that, uh, you know, they've been holding above parity and now they're at a buck oh one almost, you know, so that'll be interesting because you have almost a head and shoulders it looks like forming. So unless they can take out those highs and maybe get up to 102, um, I think that we might see that's when we'll see a turn in the dollar, but it's probably going to take about a, another week or so before that settles in. And Teddy, I just have the site up here, forex-trading-unlock.com, folks, and you'll see a menu at the top. You can click on Forex here. Teddy's got a lot of great charts of all these currencies. So if you can explain to people what, what's going on in these charts, Teddy, as I'm jumping around. Like, for instance, uh, we always talk about the Swiss franc. I get the Swiss franc up there. We got a lot of good action, and then we have details going on on the right. Um, if you can explain about what kind of goes on with these charts and what they're looking at here. Okay, with those charts, they're all fully functional. You don't have to log in. You just, like you said, you click on the links and you go on to the uh, chart. So you can manipulate those and do analysis from anywhere in the world if you've got a um, desktop or a laptop to work from. Yeah. And uh, there's the news feeds that come in, so you have things that come in from StockTwix, FX.com, and a whole bunch of other different news sources, anything that pertains like on, on those individual pages for those markets. So everything that you see on those news parts there, those are all Euro-related or you know, Forex-related. No, it's nice and easy, man. I like how you set it up, grabbing all these currencies as we jump around. Um, Basil, I know you're, you're always looking at Forex when you're talking about dollars and so forth. Did you have anything to uh, ask uh, Teddy I about? I do. If you, if you, um, I'm not sure what uh, the answer would be, but my question here is that in relation to gold and the dollar, where they often move in counterpoint, and every once in a while, I always say about six weeks or so, a couple of times a year, they actually move in sequence together in the same direction, not the same percentage. The dollar has been held, holding very well. Since and we only have about 50 night. seconds, Basil. So okay, 97.71 high. Why, why do you think? Is it more currency-related right now that the dollar hasn't actually spiked into the 97.40, 97.60 area, but it hasn't broken down either? 
I think it's more the interest rate variable. I think that's what's supporting the dollar right now. Okay. So in the, in the cycle of things right now, like you have the interest rates that are pushing the um, higher level or lower pricing, higher levels, that typically goes first, then gold will follow later. And that's why I think you see seeing that little sell off in gold is now kind of following the interest rates. But on a weekly basis, it's about two or three weeks behind the interest rates. Got it. Teddy, we always appreciate the interview, man. We appreciate the education. Have yourself a great week. How's that Chicago weather, man? You know what? It was nice and sunny yesterday. I got a little uh, thing in the Perfect. We're coming into May soon, man. Take care, Teddy. We'll talk to you next week. Folks, forex-trading-unlocked. Right, we'll be right back. strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. We get the Dow down about 20, S&P's negative by 2. NASDAQ got quite a pop there. I had the NASDAQ 70, yeah, 7703. That NASDAQ 100, excuse me, 7703. So, Basil, real briefly, right on the front page of TFNN, folks, check it out, the opening call. And when you get in there, you gain access. We talked about it real briefly, but I encourage everybody. Basil's awesome archive workshops. There's three of them in there. One of them just from briefly earlier this month, an hour and a half workshop, and all the information right on the front page. I encourage you to check it out. Get ready for Basil's program coming up at noon. And with that, Basil, what are we going to be talking about at noon? What's on the horizon? I'm, I'm going to take a little time. I want to talk about the, the move in the IYT, which is the Dow Transports, the ETF. Uh, we've been along since 185 at 197 today, but it's leg D. We're always looking for that. 
in the week in the daily chart. What does it mean with the weekly in the V-shaped recovery? I'm going to be talking about. Uh, I, I do want to spend just a moment on uh, interest rates. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I want to talk about it in relation to where we are. So this is a, this important is going to be a stuff. Detailed. Those interest rates, not to yeah, interrupt you, but it definitely. Course, we just heard Teddy talk about the uh, relationship at this moment with the dollar. Yes. And it explained it very well why it's just been kind of stuck here. So there are a couple of things. And then I'm also talking about Chapman Wave methodology because we have so many D's and E's right here. What, what does that mean in, in terms of the uh, uh, different indexes? So it's, it's going to be very detailed. It's more like my Friday Chapman Wave uh, the, the study. This is going to be a study. Uh, Good. Uh, and we won't be here Friday, but I know, so you're doing your program at noon, of course. I appreciate you doing the morning show with me this morning and yesterday. And I know tomorrow you'll be filling in to wrap up our week. So you'll have that That's opportunity. Tomorrow is the end of the week. That's right. From tomorrow 3 till 4, he's going to be filling in for Tom O'Brien, folks, tomorrow afternoon, which is the final hour of the trading week. Or well, Basil, week? I appreciate yeah. you joining me as always, and we look forward to the show at noon today. Always enjoy it, Tommy. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Folks, stay tuned. TD Ameritrade, Fast Market Next, Basil at 12, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, all this afternoon. Stay tuned. Have a great Wednesday.